To join two pieces of wood at an angle, you can carve a groove in one piece and shape the other into a protruding tenon to fit together. However, under lateral tension, they may slip apart. To prevent this, shape the tenon and mortise into a trapezoidal form like a dovetail hook which tightens as it's pulled. This is called a dovetail joint. Lay these structures vertically and use a cross beam with pre-cut mortises to connect and support them, forming a figure eight wooden arch frame. When set over a river, this can serve as a wooden bridge framework. However, this structure's wind resistance is still insufficient. You can insert five slightly shorter logs into the gaps of the figure eight arch, connecting them with tenon and mortise joints to form a pentagonal shape. The arch frame, like two crossed index fingers, will hold tightly together, but if lateral forces push the arch's sides, it may still sway. Cleverly, you can add vertical general pillars on both sides and install cross bracing between the pillars and the base supports. This disperses lateral forces into axial pressure, preventing deformation. Adding diagonal frog leg braces further strengthens the bridge's stability. Next, lay bridge planks on top and construct a four-pillar, nine-ridge beam structure. Cover it with a suspended gable roof and double-layered green tiles to provide shelter from wind, rain, and heat for passers-by. Plaid the bridge body with overlapping weatherboards to protect the wooden structure from rain erosion. By adding small fan-shaped or peach-shaped windows to the weatherboards, you reduce wind resistance, allow natural light, and enable scenic views. Congratulations! You've invented the Langsy Bridge, a wooden-covered bridge.